Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE chemistry lesson where you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 12.5, identification of ions and gases. As always, we'll be following the Cambridge syllabus exactly and we'll learn absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. Please note I've only posted half the topics in the syllabus here on YouTube. The complete syllabus is available on my Patreon, link below. Also, the slides I use in my videos, which can be used as a teaching resource or a vision guide, are now available to download as PDFs. The fully modifiable PowerPoint version will be available soon. You need to describe chemical tests to identify negatively charged ions or anions. To test for the presence of carbonate ions, CO3 2 minus, add a dilute acid such as hydrochloric acid to the sample and bubble the gas produced through aqueous calcium hydroxide or lime water. Carbonate anions react with hydrogen cations from the acid to produce carbon dioxide gas and water. The carbon dioxide reacts with aqueous calcium hydroxide to produce a solid white precipitate of calcium carbonate, which turns the lime water cloudy. To test for the presence of halide ions, which are the anions formed by the elements in group 7, acidify the sample with dilute nitric acid and then add aqueous silver nitrate. Halide anions react with silver cations from the silver nitrate to form insoluble silver halide precipitates. The colour of the precipitate depends on the specific halide present in the sample. Chloride ions form a white precipitate of silver chloride, bromide ions form a cream precipitate of silver bromide, and iodide ions form a yellow precipitate of silver iodide. To test for the presence of nitrate ions, NO3-, add aqueous sodium hydroxide and aluminium foil to the sample and gently heat the mixture. If nitrate ions are present, they'll be reduced to ammonia gas, which turns damp red litmus paper blue. To test for the presence of sulfate ions, SO4-2-, acidify the sample with dilute nitric acid and then add a few drops of aqueous barium nitrate. Sulfate anions react with barium cations from barium nitrate to form a solid white precipitate of barium sulfate. To test for the presence of sulfite ions, SO3-2-, add a dilute acid to the sample, gently heat the mixture, and bubble the gas produced through aqueous potassium manganate 7. Sulfite ions react with dilute acids to produce sulfur dioxide gas, which turns aqueous potassium manganate 7 colourless. Next, you need to describe chemical tests to identify aqueous cations. To test for the presence of ammonium ions, NH4+, add a few drops of sodium hydroxide to the sample and gently heat the mixture. Ammonium cations react with hydroxide anions from sodium hydroxide to produce water and ammonia gas, which turns damp red litmus paper blue. To test for the presence of a given metal ion, simply add 2-3 to three drops of aqueous sodium hydroxide or aqueous ammonia to the sample. Metal cations react with hydroxide anions from the sodium hydroxide or ammonia to form insoluble metal hydroxide precipitates. The colour of the precipitate depends on the specific metal ion in the sample. For example, if the sample contains calcium ions, the precipitate will be white, if it contains copper 2 ions, it'll be blue, and if it contains iron 3 ions, it'll be brown. Some metal ions form precipitates of the same colour. To make further distinctions, we can add an excess of sodium hydroxide or ammonia and observe whether or not the precipitate dissolves. For example, aluminium hydroxide dissolves in excess sodium hydroxide to form a colourless solution, but calcium hydroxide does not dissolve. Next, you need to describe chemical tests to identify gases. To test for the presence of ammonia, hold a piece of damp red litmus paper in the mouth of the test tube containing the reactants. If the gas is ammonia, the litmus paper changes from red to blue. To test for carbon dioxide, use a delivery tube to bubble the gas from the reaction through lime water. If the gas is carbon dioxide, the lime water turns cloudy. To test for chlorine, hold a piece of damp litmus paper over the mouth of the test tube. If the gas is chlorine, the litmus paper turns white. To test for hydrogen, lower a lighted splint into the test tube containing the gas. If the gas is hydrogen, the splint will ignite, making a distinct popping sound. To test for oxygen, lower a glowing splint into the test tube containing the gas. If the gas is oxygen, the splint will reignite. To test for the presence of sulfur dioxide, bubble the gas produced through acidified aqueous potassium manganate 7. If the gas is sulfur dioxide, the colour of the solution changes from purple to colourless. 
Finally, you need to describe the use of a flame test to identify metal cations. Start by dipping a loop of wire made of an unreactive metal like nichrome into a dilute acid such as hydrochloric acid to ensure that the wire is clean and free of impurities. Dip the wire into the solution or solid containing the metal ion to be tested and then hold the wire over a Bunsen burner in the hottest part of the flame. The colour of the flame produced depends on the specific metal ion in the sample. For example, lithium produces a red flame, sodium produces a yellow flame, and copper produces a blue flame. Well done, you just covered absolutely everything you need to know on the last topic in the syllabus, topic 12.5, identification of ions and gases. Thank you for supporting my channel, and best of luck with your exams.